Hello everyone. So welcome in advance to eleven minutes before the uh, the premiere of Halo Infinite's multiplayer overview, where everything's going to be shown off. Hopefully, we'll get to see a little bit more about Halo Infinite, of which everybody's been clamoring up for ages. If you're a big Halo fan, so there's uh, there's some optimism there. There's a little bit of worry as to you know what's going to be shown off and how good it's going to be, but going into this a little bit more optimistic because of what was shown off the other day. Hold back on the boost, says Proof. So yeah, so for... While we wait for the extra 10 minutes, let's talk about E3 so far. So, it's been a bit of a train wreck. The only... Uh, the only good conference as of the moment, as of me doing this stream, has been Microsoft's conference. Every other conference has been absolute trash or full of cringe, and uh, that's not a good sign. You know, we've had uh, a lot of memes this year, especially from Square Enix. Uh, there's the, uh, the Final Fantasy Origin game that is literally just chaos the game. Uh, we have the rest of Square Enix's stuff, which is was dedicated to Marvel, so we had Guardians of the Galaxy and then Black Panther, which took up most of the runtime. Uh, when the entire thing was only like 47 minutes, I think it was. And uh, about 30 was taken up by Marvel stuff. Well, then, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. So, Microsoft's had the best one so far. They showed off games back to back, they didn't treat anybody like children. And. It seemed like they had a, uh, a pretty good lineup. So, going into this, it's going to be interesting. And I want to uh, hopefully see a return to form for Halo as a brand just in general. But it's, uh, it's a bit awkward. It's a bit awkward. With, with Halo, you have the whole deal with the, the behind the scenes goings on when the... They transferred the entire series from Bungie to uh, 343. Because 343 was made roughly about the end of uh, Halo 3's cycle. The idea was that Bungie was told that they can leave Microsoft if they want. But the only problem is that they have to leave Halo behind. And that's why Bungie decided, you know, we'll go and make Destiny instead. So 343 took over and instead then we got a, uh, a new series of games which used... More of the book canon, which, depending on how you, you look at the series and uh, how you split it up, whether you put it as one big gigantic storyline or whether you split it up between Bungie and 343, and uh, look at it that way, it can either be good or bad, working in extra book lore. I, I suppose it depends how much of a nerd you are with this thing. If you just want to enjoy the games and the game story, which for the, the first three or four games, I think it is, the, the first three in ODST is considered canon, then, uh, you know, if you want to split it up that way, then that's all fine and dandy, but the problem is then you start uh, seeing conflicting stuff in the uh, the fourth and fifth games. It's really weird, the way that they've split the canon up. But yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing what we get from this. The, the trailer the other day was pretty interesting. We didn't see too much, and there were already uh, people turning around and saying, look, they know they don't want to show off anymore because it's still just as bad. To which, I, I hope it isn't. We got to saw a little bit more of the landscape. We get to see, or we got to see a little bit more of the story. And uh, we got to see a lot more of the multiplayer. Interesting things for multiplayer is we got to see Picatinny rails on the rifles, like the battle rifle and stuff, which is interesting because it suggests there's going to be add-ons that you can get for them. Uh, we got to see grenades, similar to stuff that you'd see in like Battlefield or whatever, where you can see through walls with them rather than Spartan Vision that was introduced in, I think, Halo 4 or Halo 5, or Forerunner Vision, sorry. Um... We had a new weapon introduced, which looked kind of weird. Uh, which was... It was basically almost like Forerunner in design. But most of the, the armors and the weapons have taken the, the sort of Halo Reach look. Which I suppose is safe for them, but at this point they, they have everything to lose considering 
from what the uh, the fans are acting like, it seems like the the franchise has basically got this one last chance. Otherwise, massive amounts of people are going to leave in droves. So it's everything's on the line for Xbox with Infinite because if they don't if they don't really pull out a good Halo game, then it could be uh, it could be a, a very very fast downhill for them. Infinite looks sick. Screw the haters, says, uh, what in chat? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far. More than, uh, more than last time. Honestly, I'm hoping we see more campaign, though, eventually. Like, I like the way that it's spent more time in development, obviously. You know, the longer it is in development, the more they can, uh, hopefully fix up any issues that they have. But it's just just roughly about five minutes now until this multiplayer premiere kicks off. The multiplayer is going to be free, which means that they're going to monetize it a little bit. They're going to split it up into seasons and monetize things. Uh, so I imagine it'll be uh, something similar to uh, something like Apex at the moment, where you, with different skins or things, you have to pay for them. Uh, we've already been told really early on through some promotional campaigns I think there was some food related promotional campaigns that they were specifically doing different camouflage and stuff that was valued at a couple of dollars so uh, the they're, they're definitely monetizing color schemes and different shaders and things destiny style or at least they were at the time that that was done which was I think oh I'm, I'm gonna go back and say it was probably almost a year ago uh, if you got the Nerf Halo Assault Rifle, then you're able to use that skin in-game. That was valued at... Oh God, I can't remember how much that was valued at, but basically there's all this promotional stuff going along with it to try and get monetization out of it uh, because it's free. So what you'll be paying for, essentially, is the main campaign and then anything extra is for the multiplayer. Hello everyone coming in, yo Corsa. The only thing I'm worried about is that it won't live up to the Halo 3 hype. A lot of people will be mad just because it isn't Halo 3. The thing is, I get where you're coming from, and that's that's what I'm kind of worried, like no joke, that's where I'm kind of worried as well, because for a lot of people, especially older Halo fans, Halo 3 was like the peak of everything, because it was basically a cultural event as well. Uh... And I've mentioned it before, I was mentioning it last night in one of the, the campaign streams that I did where I just chill and have a laugh going through campaign as quick as I can while talking to you guys. And we kind of came to the agreement in chat that Halo has always been best when it's emulating that sort of classic arena shooter feel and then just enhancing it just a little bit with, with different uh, gadgets or weapons or things like that. Just little changes here and there to really change it up a little bit. So... It's going to be interesting seeing if they go back to that, if they go back to something similar to Reach or whatever and just change things up just a tiny bit. I mean, they technically have done that with the grappling hook already. So, it's going to be interesting to see how close this is to old Halo, but with that fresh coat of paint on it. It's that weird sort of scenario of trying to get something that will appeal to everybody when you can't appeal to everybody, but at least try and appease the majority of fans that are going to be coming back and playing your game and giving you money for this, you know. Definitely like the look of the grappling hook, but we'll have to see how that changes the flow of multiplayer. At the moment, we're waiting two minutes for this premiere now, and it's it's all on 343 to deliver something that hopefully will be strong and give everybody that likes Halo a, a good idea of what where this is going to go in future. You can't catch lightning in a bottle twice. Yeah, you really can't. You really can't. I think it's fair to say, though, if it gets anything close to what people were expecting from Classic, then they'll be happy. Halo has that weird... Pos well, did have that weird place in the shooter genre where everything else kind of went and did sprint and... 
aiming down sights and advanced mobility and Halo kind of stuck out as this one game that was still doing classic arena shooting and the focus was more on controlling the map and the spawns of the weapons and stuff. I think that's why a lot of people originally liked it because it stayed classic and just enhanced it just a little bit through visuals and some weapons and customization and things rather than going full on in and following trends at least until we got to Halo 4 and 5. But then again, that's another conversation that I've had quite a lot recently and I don't know whether I've explained it properly. The premiere will begin shortly, so hope you guys are enjoying and I hope you're excited. I am. I'm excited but worried at the same time. We'll see how this goes. We've already seen them change the art style completely based on the feedback that they got from Halo Wars 2. So let's hope that what they have at least grabs everybody's attention again. That's the least we can hope for. The most we can hope for is that it does that and looks incredibly fun and immediately gets everybody's attention. <laughs> the premiere will begin shortly. I was just checking the date and time then. I was paranoid because it's uh, it keeps saying we'll begin shortly and it's it's time. Where's my premiere? 343. Ah, here we go. Another two minutes until it, we uh, we get to see it because of the way premiere works. Yeah, I'll just turn that down a little bit. Corsa says, and I, I hope the audio is fine, guys. I, I take it the background sound isn't too loud. I'm just going to uh, turn down the volume so I can at least hear it a little bit. I'm not deafened myself. Yeah, I take it the audio is fine. Corsa says, I'm not holding my breath, honestly. They screwed up too much with Halo 5. I uh, unfortunately. That's why I say, like, this is basically the last hurrah kind of thing. They've really got to hit this one out of the park. John says, can barely hear you. What, what about now, John? Is that a little bit better? I changed some of the sounds from, uh, from last night. Also, rather, some of the, uh, the volume bits, so... So you can hear the background stuff and me at the same time, yeah? Because that, that hopefully is going to be alright. I, sh I shouldn't have changed the settings from yesterday. So yeah, as long as you guys can hear the, uh, the background audio. There we go. I can hear you clearly since the beginning, says Proof. Okay, okay. Okay, so as long as you guys can hear what's going on in the background and me at the same time, we're all good. We've got 15 seconds from now. Ooh, all eyes on 343 and Microsoft. Cross your fingers, boys. Here we go. Okay. Hey, battle rifle. Aiming down sides, classic needler design. Of like being in a firefight and hearing the, the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off. There's the bulldog. My gunner's upside down and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel that looked like reach for a moment that's good and remember how excited i was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place and halo means something different for everyone right i think that that's what makes halo great i like that guy there's the classic grav hammer and what looked like eva helmet Joe it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat we're taking that awesome legacy or classic halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways Ooh. that feel 
fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're going to give you great ways to customize your Spartan, build okay. with your super soldier, your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's going to evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. Okay. Sounds good so far. It looks we good. Through this multiplayer of this game and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us but still build something that feels new. Yeah. Try to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a in a in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. Okay, that sounds good so far. Sounds good. Isn't looking too far from what I expected. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like what is the core okay. of what made the great Halo multiplayer arena matches great. Halo is really about fair and balanced starts. Yeah. Everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And then this is what I've been saying. Around, it's about scavenging, it's about finding new toys. And yes. Kind of developing your play style as you run. Playing the map. Playing the map. Playing the spawns. Um, I feel like uh, the answer to that question is is the sandbox like the sandbox is halo when we set out to look at halo infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to halo but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet oh nice but equipment is kind of uh, has the has a, has a bigger voice than ever before we ask questions to ourselves of uh if you could go after you know a power weapon to get a bunch of kills uh, would you do that or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another huh. avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. Okay. The exciting combinatory nature of, you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like your overshoot, Ooh. reactive camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up. And you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. Okay. If you haven't used it, and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that over. And they can pick it up? It, use it for themselves. Okay. It is very okay. legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. When it comes to the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my Warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood can get blown off. There's different aspects of the vehicle. <laughs> it's not going to... The real left tires off? And that's something that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and, and explodes. explodes. You've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time, and you got to choose what you want to do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got okay. The Warthog, which is the razor. Gun. The back has this like multi storage oh, cool. compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you want to put like attached turrets, power the weapons, hell? fusion coils, objectives, and that is what is really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt. An MP and campaign. The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they want to do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat? What kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? Liking the look of the grapple so far. For me, BTV is all about experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Okay. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them, and we have a commander in your ear telling you that pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. Wait, what? Halo 2 so how does this Halo work? Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. Uh, but are those feel like like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. Are those this is not just specific spawns though or just a certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. I'm kind of worried about that one. Kind of reminded me of Halo 4. So just do those land in certain areas or what? Moments, your game modes just like the way it was before. Personal AI is really a reflection and in information for the player. <laughs> so if a player grabs a flag, 
your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base. Okay. To give you some, like, moment-to-moment -moment updates. What if we can let players choose their own AI and each one of those are different voices so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They, they add I do like the classic announcer. As a, as a Spartan, being more important, and, and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan. You're Spartan. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The body of customization okay. content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons, and we've got a whole slew of customization. Right Do you like the, uh, Vehicles, the color on the MA faulty then? Too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also huh. customizes the No! No! Soldiers. Oh, there we go. We want the Spartan to represent the Whew. player as much as possible. They can change their body type, I'm gonna have to talk their there. voice, as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Uh, offer us a unique we could already get prosthetic. Well, we could already get a prosthetic arm in reach. Yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us huh. that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. Okay, so tell me. First off is the battle pass. The Halo Battle Pass will never be taken away from you. What do I mean by that? Okay. Once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future oh. seasons, you can purchase old Battle Passes as well as the current Battle Pass and choose which Battle Pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never going to be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the Battle Pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it under the store. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and okay. only through playing the game. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players. Okay. Some opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the samurai already. That's one of our event armor cores. And that's going to be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. All with the battle pass. That's going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game. Like, that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can... When we have a new update, there's, there's, they'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. <laughs> to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game okay. on PC. I like the way they're actually thinking about it as a company first, that way. Kind of excite new players about the game. Yeah, we get the audience, we get the money. Simple. And like even in just customs, being able to just play with your friends. That like some people have PCs and some people have consoles, and like let them talk to each other, let them be friends. Ooh, should we get crossplay now? Why are you here? To be a Spartan. So Academy is a place that you can go uh, within MP to kind of onboard into the experience. It's great for newer players who okay. are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking. It's a series of experiences, both a tutorial to get started for the first time. Weapons oh, that's neat. Kind of like the, the tutorial so level in kind of Apex then. You can use to just get warm, explore the game as you want to. For players who are new to Halo, let's help them learn what this universe is about. Okay. So these characters, what, what are they about? and help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we can make That's a actually a good idea to be honest. I like that because then it introduces new players into it pretty I mean, I'm super soft, bad you know, so sort of easily and soft so they're not going straight in and getting wrecked. ...have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. So this must be the area where we get bot mode or something. ...on the road to launch and after launches absolutely critical right I mean Halo's always been about the community conversation we want to make sure we hear our players make changes where we can based on that feedback okay make sure the game is ready for launch and then even beyond launch what I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands 
you know, whether it's seeing what people make in four. I'm liking what I see so far. Able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game. To get involved, you go to HaloInsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already. <laughs> just throwing fusion calls at people. I feel like the fusion call may have been toned down because originally it was just one shot explode kills you, if I remember rightly. More frequently. And that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far. <laughs> and, uh, I'm looking forward to the road. Thank you to the feedback. Uh, thank you for the feedback, guys. We, we've clearly changed the game. Okay, so. There was other things that I'd seen previously, you know, in the yesterday's video where they were showing like shields off and stuff that you could reflect projectiles back. That was pretty cool. Okay, so is that? I'm assuming that's the end, so we can we can talk about this now. It's gonna be interesting seeing if I can run this on PC, which I'm assuming I'm gonna be able to. Let's. Yeah. Okay. So that's. Okay, so that's that's going off now. Yeah, it sure seems like it. I'm just making sure here. Yeah, it seems like that's it. Okay, guys. Yeah, the uh, the skull, the skull particular. Let's get into this. So the skull has always been a uh, melee item. I have a feeling that that's oddball, and if. I have a feeling they've given it the blue flame primarily to to represent Bungie a little bit, because the the blue flame was a specific thing for Bungie when they were they were doing Halo Reach and stuff. So I imagine uh, the way that they'll just do that is it's kind of a nod to have the blue flame there, but they don't specifically say, "Oh, it's for Bungie." You know, um, I imagine that was something that Joe worked in just for a laugh because the oddball has never looked like that before. It's never been on fire. It's always been. Um, uh, if it was a, a blue flame, it was for the reach customization for one of the helmets, if I remember rightly. And I think it was Halo 3 as well. There was another one for that, uh, for the recon helmet. But yeah, let's let's talk. So we got we got a load of interesting stuff there. We got uh, some gameplay, a lot of gameplay, which looked a lot like reach rather than. Uh, some of the newer stuff, which I actually liked, because they clearly made a, a conscious effort to highlight the fact that they wanted to go back to classic. Maybe because everybody else was saying, go back to classic, it's what makes it stand out, you know, amongst the sea of all the shooters at the moment. Um, I like the, the look of the grapple hook. It looks like you run around and pick that up as equipment, kind of like the uh, the other pickups at the moment. I could be wrong, but um, what I take away from this is that I like the fact that they've clearly listened to people, especially like with me trying to explain to you guys about how it, how important it is having Halo as an arena shooter first, with map control being the center of everything. And sure enough, they've seen that and gone, yeah, we agree. Or at least it looks like it. Because as they highlighted there, we get to play the points, we get to play the spawns, control the weapons, control key points, and they've moved power-ups back from reach, from being sort of a thing that everybody had, to stuff that you actively go and find, pick up, control, and then can take them off other people. That's neat. I like that. That's going back a lot to classic Halo and saying, yeah, we, we understand we made it a couple of mistakes, so here's what we think was the best of the sandbox. Have fun. Uh, the vehicle and weapon drop thing, that reminded me a little bit of Halo 4. I think that was for BTB, though. Uh, I could be wrong. I'm assuming... That even though they said, oh, you know, weapons get dropped down in the Halo 2 style pods and pelicans come in and drop vehicles off so they're not just at the base. I'm assuming that's they drop stuff off over time in specific spawns because otherwise that would kind of ruin the flow of the gameplay. 
<laughs> I, I'm assuming anyway. Uh, because then at least you've still got some hard spawns for this stuff, but the vehicles aren't always there and the weapons are there. They just come in at a different time. Uh, that's fair. Uh, the ability to throw around fusion coils and stuff, that's going to be interesting, especially for, for multiplayer. Don't have any great grenades, just pick up a fusion coil and chuck it at somebody. Uh, the customization, I like the idea of the battle pass stuff. Uh, especially considering it looks like it's going to be seasonal, uh, kind of similar to to Apex in a way. So you you can either play for free and work towards stuff, which will probably be a bit of a grind, or you can buy the battle pass, which gets you not so much an e uh, like all the unlocks straight away, but it gives you an easier shot at getting that stuff, and it's almost like. When they change season and you've got a new theme there, like for instance, say one season they have Hayabusa from Halo 3, and then another time they have, say, like EVA armor for the next season. If you want to go back and get Hayabusa, you just buy the previous season pass. So that's, that's pretty cool. It always stays with you, like they said, so it never goes away. So you can still go back and get that stuff at any time. That's what I'm taking away from this anyway. Well, that's my understanding. Um... It's good. I like this. This this was what they needed. Personally, this is what they needed to, to come out with, was this. The only other way that they could have hit this out of the park, I think, would have been if they'd have showed off more of the campaign. And I mean, like, gone back to that, that video from last year and shown off the campaign with more work. You know, I, I feel like they're missing that right now to get people on board. People are going to be looking at the multiplayer and going, okay... This looks kind of neat, you know, they'll, you'll have the, the people that are like, oh, they're just giving up and going back to Reacher style and playing it safe, you know, they're not really evolving this. No, they are. They have considerably, but they've done it in a classic way, which is really nice, but I, I really want to see that campaign, because that's what you're paying for at the end of the day. The multiplayer is just an add-on. The, uh, the campaign is really what you're paying for, so I want to see if they've actually fixed it. You know, that, that's a worry, because even though a lot of people will play the multiplayer, I feel like hardcore fans will go for the campaign more. So, uh, that's going to be interesting. We've got the, 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 what was it, the academy or whatever it is, the uh, the training ground area with bots and things like that to, uh, to welcome people into the game. That is very nice. I feel like that was definitely taken from Apex in terms of like, yeah, we'll, we'll get somewhere where it's easy to introduce the player into the game and, you know teach them the ropes and things. That was really nice to see. Um, and then, of course, we had the armor customization, which it, it takes a lot from Reach, you know, in terms of being able to customize your Spartan a lot. I'm not sure what they would, they, they would do with... No, talking too fast. I'm not sure what they were going for with the whole thing of, oh, look, we can have prosthetics for the first time. That's bold because we've had that since Reach, being able to have robo-arms and stuff. They made that a big deal with Reach, you know, playing up the whole thing of, look, you can have Kat's robo-arm. And they recently had that in the MCC where you can change, I think, what side it's on or what torso armor you have at the same time. So, that was a bit weird. I feel like they were doing that maybe for either accessibility or inclusivity. Just saying, look, you can play like this and oh, it's, it's going to be interesting. It appeals to these, you know, types of people. But, I don't know, that's just me assuming. If the campaign is crap, the game will fail, says Corsa. Yeah. Uh, it's... For now, it's for all limbs, says John. Ah, uh, you see, I didn't see that. I only saw the arm thing, so... If they'd have shown off, like, a leg or whatever, I would have been like, oh, okay, that's cool, so I can be more robo than anything else. You know. Uh, can't wait to see a Spartan in Hawaiian shirt as a cosmetic, says Proof. <laughs> They showed it on the leg, says John. I'm going to have to go back and check that. What the hell was that? It was like... Oh, come on. I clearly did not see that. I was too busy being like, ooh. You know? I, w I was too busy listening to the buzzwords and hanging on every, every moment. You know, especially comparing it to Reach. That assault rifle looks so damn good. Just the, the color scheme for it anyway. 
Do you notice how in the campaign demo as well the other day they changed it from being like the uh, the black and grey one that they had originally to the, the actual reach coloured one? That's really interesting. Ah, there we go. It was on about customization then for a moment. Okay, so there's the arm. There's the full arm. No, nah, didn't show it on the legs. Just let me let me see if they've they've got it. Right leg none. Yeah, then we've got left arm. What does that say? It's hard to see because I've got it on the smaller screen. So it's what trans radio or something. Oh, trans, no, transhuman, sorry. Yeah, so they, they don't show it off on the legs there, but I do like the way that that looks kind of like cat's arm. That's cool. Let's see if we can pick apart this a little bit. Because I like the, uh, the intro. This, this bit here, the best part about this for me, because it, it's been awkward trying to, uh, talk about this and discuss what Halo is and what how good it was originally and what it should be. Because whenever I say arena shooter, everybody turns around and goes, oh, you're a classic Halo fan, you know, you, you don't want it to evolve. It's like, no, I do, just in the right way. And I feel like this is definitely the, the right way of doing it. We've got aim, aiming down the sights on what I'm assuming is the uh, the the new battle rifle thing. What was it, like the, the VK or something? There's the needler. Classic needler versus assault rifle there. I wish they'd shown off more of, like, assault rifle going into melee, you know, the, the classic trifecta of uh, assault rifle melee grenade that they, they went on about in older Halo behind the scenes. Uh, you can see it in gameplay in one of the screenshots, says John. Ah, right, okay, okay. So we've got the... Uh, I've noticed how they've, they've got back everything. I was going to point this out the other day, but I noticed how they've got back the classic designs for vehicles as well since Halo 4. So we've got the classic Ghost. We've got the uh, the Brute Chopper back. I was, uh, honest to God, I was smiling at seeing the, the Halo 3 style Brute Chopper the other day. Let's, uh, let's see what we got here. So he picks up the Bulldog. Two shots. I feel like the, the Bulldog's kind of in a weird position at the moment because I understand that it's a more rapid fire shotgun. It's like, where's the normal shotgun, though? You can't just get rid of the normal shotgun. I have a feeling that might still be in there. That, the... That looks so much like Classic Halo, just on the, uh, the back of the rocket hog. It reminds me so much of Reach. Just that. The... That one snippet. Which is really, really good. Then we got... This almost reminds me of Call of Duty. You know, because of the, the way the environment's set out. I, there's one card map... And I think it's Modern Warfare 2. I could be wrong about that. Where it's, it's literally like this. But it's a load of these buildings dotted around the map. And it's very close quarters and everything. And I think there's a couple of dogs that jump out at you. It reminds me of that a little bit. The only difference is it's not as uh, full up with buildings and stuff. There we got the, the mongoose. A couple of mongoose. Three mongoose. I don't, is that, yeah, that's a rocket. I like the rocket trail there. Like this guy, he was really cool when it comes to uh, the talking about the stuff. We got the classic sniper, we got the grav hammer, and the the uh, what looks like EVA helmet in the background. Although I could be wrong, that might be uh, there's another one that looks similar to the EVA, but I'm trying to remember what it's called. It eludes me for the moment. It, it, it was in Reach. I can always go back and look at it later. I feel like Joe stepped in on the multiplayer and went, right, this is what it should be. And then they turned around and went, okay, okay, fair enough. They've definitely, well, they definitely look like they've learned from the mistakes, though. And got, like they said, they've gone back and made this a celebration. We got that same map with the, the pistol here. Somebody shields flaring, and then somebody comes out of nowhere with one, what looks like a bulldog or an SMG. We got my old CQB helmet. There's the, the grapple. There we go. Assault rifle, shot into melee, and then down. That that looks so good. Just being able to, to see the spawns on the map and being like, yeah, okay, this spawn point has this power weapon, let's control it. That's that's gonna be real nice. There we got the, the reach style AR. Slay your enemies. I like that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> okay. There's the uh, the new rifle that has the, the aiming down sights thing, I think. So yeah, it looks like they finally figured out the sandbox. Which is uh, interesting. I like the way we've got that shield there, but it's not the, the bubble shield. It's back to the, uh, the different colored assault rifles. That looks more like the MA-40 rather than the MA-37. They threw a grenade behind there and it just landed behind the shield and killed him. That's pretty cool, that, instead of the bubble shield that made you invincible from all sides unless somebody walked in. This bit's interesting to me, grabbing a, a power weapon from the other side of the map with the uh, the grapple. That could uh, infuriate quite a lot of people. <laughs> uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see what happens with that, but it is a neat way of of grabbing items and stuff. I feel like the grappling hook is definitely the one thing to look out for in this. Kind of like with uh, with armor lock in reach. It could really change or mess things up depending on how you can use it. So it's going to be interesting seeing that in future. And was that the, uh, the plasma repeater from reach there? Let's have a look. That though either looked like a plasma rifle or the plasma repeater, the... Uh, the thing that's kind of similar to the plasma rifle. I like the classic energy sword that we've got now as well, instead of the very spiky one from like, what was it, Halo 4 or Halo 5? That area kind of reminded me of the uh, the computer terminal in, I think, Sword Base from uh, Reach. At yeah, the computer terminal area. Actually, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Sword Base, sorry, it was the end of Winter Contingency. If I remember rightly, it's that downstairs area where you have to fight the elite with the concussion rifle and then the elite with the sword as well. I might be getting this mixed up completely. But yeah, what are you guys thinking about this so far? I'm, I'm really liking the look of it. I like the way that they've they've definitely gone back to classic here. It's, it's, it's giving me hope. Giving me hope. Plus it's free to play anyway for the multiplayer side of things, so either way you're not losing out, just you know, the uh, the basic sort of entry level, just trying it and seeing how you enjoy it. I like the way it matches up as well with your Xbox account, so even if you don't have an Xbox One, like the, uh, sorry, no, the Xbox Series X or whatever the hell it's called, the new one, even if you don't have one, you can still play it on PC and it'll all be good. The question is, what is the barrier of entry to... Uh, to the game spec wise for PC like I'm actually hoping that they, they don't have it be uh, high spec for entry level that'd be uh, that'd be annoying if I have to get a new computer <laughs> I like this this new hog as well the idea of putting guns on the back and stuff it, it basically is a hog I know they called it something else can't remember what they called it and I muted it here but it, it is basically just a more armored hog Wish they just made it like another hog variant rather than whatever the hell they called it. If I remember rightly, it wasn't even a uh, an animal name like the other stuff. It, it's just clearly a classic warthog with armor bolted on top of it. Then we've got King of the Hill. It's so good. <laughs> so good. I'm really liking that. The Razor Hog, I think, says John. I'm really liking how it looks. Yeah, it's... See, this is what I was on about when people say to me, like, what do you want Halo to be? You know, because I'm, I'm not exactly a purist. I'm open to other ideas, just as long as it fits within what the game is known for best. You know, when everybody says, like, what, are you, what were you expecting out of this? This is basically what I wanted. That sort of classic gameplay where you play different parts of the map you control the spawns and stuff you have that tactical element that they were on about the strategy there but you just enhance that by giving players like 
couple of extra weapons, a couple of different power-ups, because those are all you really need to change gameplay. The core gameplay can still stay the same, but it's those power-ups and the way that you use them and how they interact with each other, that's what changes the gameplay, and that's why I like the grapple, because it's it's the major game changer in all of this. I feel like the grapple being able to give the player easy access to grabbing weapons from range, being able to scale uh, vertically over long distances and things, that will definitely change up the gameplay. It's all a case of, will it be good or will it be bad? We'll have to wait and see. I'm assuming there's going to be like a range to it or something, like you can't go infinite distances with it, which is, is logical. So I assume it's like mid-range distance, we're going to have to see. I imagine it's going to be uh, crazy in, like, smaller maps with that kind of thing. And they've also got to design the maps with verticality and with that in mind, like, how far it can go and where you can use it and stuff. But, yeah. Th this, for me, looks really good. Really, really good. I'm happy with this. Let's just call it a puma, says proof. <laughs> oh, is that a puma? What, you mean like a big cat? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. It's looking good so far. I'll see you guys on the next one. So until then, bye.